And as we come to that Brexit deadline, I am encouraged by the progress we are making. In the last few weeks, the chances of a deal have been rising. That was British Prime Minister Boris Johnson just yesterday addressing his nation about Brexit, all while protesters are caught on mic yelling, stop the coup. Now, they're furious with Johnson over his plan to spend Parliament for a month to give members less time to block his Brexit plan, which could have the UK crash out of Europe with few protections come October 31st. Word today that Johnson had been planning the move for a month, but kept it secret, opening him up to comparisons to a 17th century king. That is large numbers called the maneuver, the aforementioned coup. Parliament, it was in session today, one of its few days before the week's long suspension, and there was a surprise. As Johnson was speaking, a member of Johnson's own conservative party crossed the aisle and joined the opposition during his speech. Think of it as the equivalent of a sitting American senator switching parties. But his defection, it moved Johnson's party out of the majority in Parliament. So as lawmakers' votes counted, hoping to block that no-deal Brexit. Johnson's take on Brexit seems to be unpopular, but it may help him in the next elections, which could happen either before or after that October 31st Brexit deadline. New polling shows Johnson's conservatives. They have a 12-point lead over any other party. Combine that with the Brexit party. The two pro-Brexit groups would appear to be close to a majority. But that could be at odds with the British public's view of Brexit itself. A plurality now say that Britain was wrong to seek to leave Europe, and more than 70% of the Brits think that the government is handling Brexit badly. And for insight, we turn to David Smith. David, he's a D.C. bureau chief for the British news organization, The Guardian. David, I thought American politics were crazy. Wow, you need a scorecard there. Um, how foreseeable or how much of a surprise um, was that defection right in the middle of Johnson's speech? It was a big surprise. It was certainly a piece of uh, political theatre, uh, very dramatic and probably intended to be so as uh, Philip Lee defected from the Conservatives to uh, the opposition Liberal Democrats. And uh, he also gave quite a stark uh, statement. He said, this is not the party that I joined in the 1990s. Uh, now conservatism seems to be judged by uh, how recklessly one wants to leave uh, the European Union, and it uh, certainly puts Boris Johnson in an even tougher spot uh, now with a minority, although um, in the short term probably doesn't change that much um, on his uh, Brexit uh, vote because um, several Conservative MPs were already uh, set to uh, vote against uh, uh, Johnson when it comes to uh, this decision on uh, uh, no-deal uh, legislation. Uh, it just really deepens the sense of, uh, of chaos, of unpredictability. Um, one uh, seasoned uh, British political journalist I, I noticed uh, writing on Twitter, uh, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, chaos, uh, madness uh, were the words he used. Uh, really, um, uh, what's been a very volatile situation for three years is becoming um, even more so uh, seemingly by the hour. David, I haven't found an economist um, that thinks um the Brexit makes sense just from a, a, a just from a, a purely British perspective, how it helps in any way, shape or form from what would happen to do with the banking industry in London and more broadly, some acute concerns as to without a plan, let forgetting even Brexit itself, without a plan for what happens the day after, things like getting medicine or some necessities, there's no clarity on how that would work. Just how much uncertainty is there come potentially November 1, where Great Britain would be? There is a huge uh, uncertainty, um, certainly in the short term, um, uh, hopefully at least uh, uh, transport, uh, flights, um, things like that. Uh, the status of uh, EU citizens in the UK would be, would be fine because a, a short term arrangement has been made by the European Union. But uh, there's still a uh, myriad uh, other issues um, that remain clouded. Uh, the UK's access to the EU's uh, crime database uh, all the way through to uh, imports of certain goods. And um, perhaps above all, of course, um, is the unresolved issue of the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, which is basically a land border between the UK and the European Union. Um, Boris Johnson has just uh, really deepened the questions over what would actually happen there. Would a, would a hard border be restored? Uh, would it revive the political violence we saw uh, over nearly half a century of the Troubles? 
so there are many questions here. Now, um, people in favour of Brexit say, look, uh, the past three years, actually, investment to the UK has been fine. Um, many of the most dire predictions have not come true during this period of uncertainty. Uh, they would also argue that, um, just as in America with Donald Trump, um, there's a rebellion against uh, experts. But all of that set aside, uh, an overwhelming majority of uh, economists and uh, other observers, both in the UK and Europe, uh, really do fear the worst and say it will be um, uh, disastrous for both the UK uh, economy um, and, and have uh, sent shockwaves out across Europe as well. I'm going to ask you to do the impossible, David, given all the moving parts. There's legal challenges to what Johnson has done more in terms of suspending government. Uh, in addition, um, he's threatened to not let any conservative votes against him to even run on the party line of conservatives going forward, whether or not um, when they would call these special elections. All that said, where do you think we're going to be November 1st? You're right. Uh, you've, you've given me an, an impossible task there. Uh, it's been so uh, unpredictable. And even as we speak, it seems to be uh, changing by the hour in Westminster. As, as things stand, uh, it looks like perhaps um, Boris Johnson will, will lose um, to uh, MPs, including uh, members of his own party. Uh, and then uh, quite possibly, as he's threatened, uh, call a general election in mid-October. And I think that gamble may pay off for him. Um, the Labour Party and, and others uh, are not necessarily united on the Remain question. And uh, Johnson may well win uh, a general election and uh, follow through with a Brexit uh, still at the end of October or perhaps a, a little later. But uh, whether um, through all of that he can somehow yet forge a deal with the EU, which um, seems very remote, or, or whether it will indeed be a, a no-deal Brexit, is still um, still very hard to, to, to read. It may depend a lot on the election result and, and who promises what. Um, uh, we really are reaching a, a crunch moment here that uh, is, does seem more unpredictable than ever. And I'm curious, David, um, I know stateside, so many developments that we thought would have been impossible under any administration that have happened, uh, working without confirmation for cabinet heads, um, you know, all the questions of the emoluments being violated, or at least practically so. They say, well, the Constitution never really thought of these things going forward. No one would have thought there would have been such an attempt at a power grab. Conversely, across the pond are some of the same questions where you know, through the brilliance of the forefathers, no one assumed anyone would do the things that are happening now, and there's really no safeguards or guardrails in place to stop Johnson from doing what he is. I think that's right, and at least when all is said and done, uh, the United States does have a written constitution, uh, which the UK does not. So for, for decades, if not centuries, the UK has really depended on, um, on goodwill and on, on leaders' uh, sense of fair play and, and doing the right thing. And certainly critics of Boris Johnson would argue now, finally, here has come along um, an unscrupulous leader who's willing to, uh, to flout regulations and, and defy the way it's all been done before. And uh, suddenly what's exposed is that there are, there are a lack of uh, rules and, and regulations to uh, constrain um, that, that somewhat uh, autocratic uh, tendency. And, and hence, uh, you hear those crowds uh, chanting uh, about a coup and, and comparing Boris Johnson to an absolute uh, monarch. Um, the one other point I'd make, uh, having um, been back to the UK recently, um, many people I spoke to there were very gloomy and pessimistic and, and took the view that uh, America at least uh, does get a chance for a do-over. In 2020, there'll be a presidential election. And uh, in theory, Donald Trump might lose. And, and something like um, pre-Trump normality uh, can be restored if a Democrat wins, whereas uh, there was a feeling uh, Brexit uh, really is for life, or, or at least a, a generation, and is, uh, has really left a, a scar on the UK, a, a, a sense of tribalism that will take uh, a very long time to heal. Well, it's going to be a fascinating fall um, in Britain. Uh, David, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, Kennedy Connections. As a younger name from America's most famous political family, eyes a big new campaign of his own. We'll take a look back on the impact of Robert Kennedy and his efforts to bring people together instead of dividing them more and more.